Hello, and welcome to another Telecom Innovator video. My name is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor here at Light Reading. And today we're going to be talking about 5G. And joining me to talk about 5G is Ron Porter from Amdocs. Hi, Ron. How are you? Great, great. Hi, Phil. Good to be here. It's great to have you. I'm glad uh, uh, you know to talk with you about 5G because you guys have a, a a broader network point of view than a lot of companies that are making uh, you know individual networking components. Um, you kind of see the whole picture of the industry and where things are going. Um, it seems like we've been talking about 5G for a long time now. Um, what do you think is actually changing at the moment? Uh, be that in the way we're using 5G or how it's showing up in the network, uh, anywhere you like to start. So I think it ties a lot to you, what you mentioned about the broader uh, picture of the network, right? I think it's it's almost like, you know, we've been talking about 5G for I don't know how many years, and there were a few years of talking and waiting for it to start. And then it started and we saw the initial rollouts, huge excitement, lots of potential uh, revenue figures were all out there. Um, and I think now we're at the point where 5G has been rolled out practically, you know, globally, almost, I think uh, practically every country has some, uh, mm -hmm. typically even more than one operator rolling out, uh, but still 5G, you know, non-standalone. So just touching on the one aspect of the radio, upgrading the radio, and not so much touching uh, uh, on the core and all of the backend systems to support this 5G vision we 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 keep talking about. And I think now the, the industry, well, not now, but now the evolving to the next step of figuring out how to really operate and monetize this new 5G network, because that requires a whole new way of thinking, right? Because yeah. I think there's a pretty standard agreement that just for faster speeds was not the driver for these huge expenses that were made to, to roll out the new 5G network. So now it's kind of looking at the next step, right? Now it's here. What can we do with it? Yeah, there's definitely a technological shift that has to occur, um, you know, for us to do more than just, uh, you know, improve. We improve the speed of the network, sure, but there's latency and all kinds of other factors there. Um, for Amdocs, how has its technology been lining up with, you know, its vision as the as as the five G rollout progresses? So, so once again, it ties into to the broader picture, right? Because Amdocs has been in the telecom industry for, for, for literally decades, right? And we've gone through multiple evolutions. And, and you know, up until a few years ago, the, the biggest focus was on doing these digital transformations. So operators wanting to meet their customer in this more real-time, dynamic digital environment. And 5G is really kind of the next step in that type of interaction. Because once now we're going to have this new dynamic, programmable network. First of all, operators need to make sure they can operate it in an efficient ways and make sure that this new dynamic network serves the business requirements that are needed. So if, and be it an enterprise that wants to order a, a, um, a IoT sensor type of service or a remote low latency uh, um, access for uh, uh, you know a remote monitoring um, or a consumer that wants to play a cool outdoor AR cloud gaming um, or a partner that wants to, which is the kind of the end goal is for partners to be able to come in and leverage this 5G new network in new dynamic ways. And if you think about it, there's all these things that have to happen so that you can get from the digital level, from the, the user, the consumer or the enterprise or the partner accessing what he needs, ordering the service and bringing it back, you know, fulfilling the service, making everything that has to happen happen and have it, making it happen across the network, right? On the radio, on the edge, which will come into play and is a central factor and through mm -hmm. the, the, the core and all the way to the cloud. So there's these kind of two axes that we, we keep coming into from the, when it's from the business or from the consumer, from the digital interface down to actually fulfilling the service and making it happen in the network. And the other is is making sure it happens really across the network and not just in one specific area because because that's not the whole point of five G. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you brought up the the link between you know the cloud and the five G network because that's you know the cloud is increasingly where we're um, yeah. you know purchasing and consuming services and and um, the five G network of course is advancing 
and giving us broader access to, uh, you know, faster bandwidth and more, more available bandwidth. Um, how do you see that link between the cloud and the 5G network manifested in the field? And then how do you, uh, you know, how do you see it sort of uh, playing out inside of Amdocs? So, so again, I think this is another kind of two, two very strong worlds the world of the 5G and the cloud, which have been coming together and 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 it started from traditional, you know, operators have been looking to the cloud and starting to cooperate with the hyperscalers. And I think at first it was in, in more traditional, you know, um, I would say cloud traditional ways, right? Let's move mm-hmm. workload to the cloud, maybe IT right. systems or whatever I can put in the cloud, enjoy the scalability and all of those benefits. And that, again, that's been happening for several years. And Amdocs, you know, we've been taking the industry to the cloud and, and working with many service providers in that end. Um, of course, now that the 5G standalone core is coming, the standalone core is going to be fully cloud native, just can be distributed. Some of the core might be in the cloud. So once again, we're seeing more cooperations with the hyperscalers and you're seeing some of the cloud providers actually coming with their own core offerings, miniature core. So there's another area of kind of uh, uh, um, a linkage. Um, and the other areas is, of course, the edge, right? And the edge, which I think a couple of years ago was considered maybe a, a classic domain for the operators, but all of the hyperscalers very quickly launched edge extensions, right, of their cloud yeah. offerings. So now you can have uh, these servers, this this kind of extension of the cloud closer to the customer and enjoy the, you know, the lower latency from the proximity or the the, the data sovereignty, you know, the different... Um, reasons to really have data close to you, and this can be on on different tiers, right? It can be on the region, or maybe in a city, or in a district, or even in a customer premise as part of the enterprise network. And and I think the last thing that we're, I mean, the last step to that extent is now that you know this cloudification is coming all the way to the to the RAN, to the radio, right? Things like VRAN and Open RAN, essentially, e- even to the extent that the only radio physical equipment will be the antenna. Everything else can be potentially in the cloud. And we're seeing many cooperations, right? Um, if it's DISH cooperating with AWS or at and yeah. selling their network operations to the cloud or Rakuten. And again, there's a lot of, uh, and not everybody is going full blown all the network to the cloud, but for sure you're starting to see these worlds collide. The, the, mm-hmm. the only thing I, I, I want to emphasize there is that operators starting to cooperate with hyperscalers, it's, it's kind of a balance um, I would say if you want to maintain a, a strong positioning in this balance, you must make sure that your system, you know, you can do as much as you're possible yourself, right? Your systems can be integrated and you can leverage and you can give your customers the experience that they want so that you're not reduced back just to being the connectivity provider. Right. Yeah, exactly. And 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 as you note, all the different major operators are um, are at different points in this journey, you yeah. know, and, and, and are pushing into the cloud at at different velocities, but they're all going there. So yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty interesting time. Um, to kind of uh, go back to something you said earlier, um, you know, we, we have kind of, the industry has kind of, you know, arrived at this point where we we go from asking when will 5G get here <laughs> to now that it's here, what do we do with it? Yeah. Um, so what kind of market trends are you seeing or, or showcasing now that, uh, that, that we're this far into the journey? So I think that the first market trend, of course, was 5G was available. And I think the initial launches were, I think, more marketing launches. We have 5G. If you had a 5G-enabled phone, you could see the icon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and first, you know, the, the first the level was devices, more and more devices arriving. Uh, um, I think where the industry now is we're seeing much more uh, um, operators focusing in the consumer segment, focusing on uh, in um, showing you um, – I would say differentiated offers. So things like 5G rich content, right? And be Mm -hmm. it cloud gaming or different AR and VR applications. Uh, uh, And this is another way to, you know, trying to show benefits to customers of having this 5G, right? If you have a 5G connection, because not everyone feels the the speed boost, um, but if you're showing new applications that you can't necessarily do with 4G, um, so that's kind of the first way to help people adopt and, and I think there's wide um, uh, evidence to people consuming much more data and even some yeah. RPU increase in different places. But that's still, I think, a little bit regional, right? Not everyone is, is 
uh, mm -hmm. uh, South Korea or, or North, again, it, it depends, right? Some areas are more yeah. advanced than others. Um, so that's one area. The other area is, of course, the enhanced focus on the enterprise, because while consumers, what we're seeing now, the I think there's wide agreement, there's huge potential for 5G in the enterprise domain and in private networks. Uh, and we're seeing, I think, a lot of explorations into these private networks. Is it completely private with your own core, or is it some sort of hybrid environment, maybe mm -hmm. based on a slice, maybe based on a, a, um, a core provided by the, the, the service provider? So we're seeing different models there. And again, it it, it ties into the, the agility that's needed in your systems to, to, to adapt to different market trends and the ability also to deliver these quickly, um, right? You know, try with this offering and if not, right, I don't need now six months to have a brainstorm and configure and integrate things in the system. I can adapt, adapt the pricing, adapt how I offer and, 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 and go to market, be to consumers um, or to, to the enterprises. And of course, I think lingering in the, like the, the potential, what the, the, the platform approach, right? The B to B to X model is the really opening the network, which some people might look at it and say, oh, it's never going to happen. But, you know, if you think of the cloud 10 years ago and where the cloud is today, people would probably say the same thing. So I'm not saying tomorrow people will be ordering a slice or resource like they're ordering servers today and today right. seems trivial. But it's an evolutionary. You can't wake up in five years and say, oh, let's start to try and do that, right? Yeah, that, that's definitely a, a thing to keep in mind is the evolutionary sort of nature of these, uh, exactly. you know, major network changes, um, and and of course the carriers themselves, the the, the, the telcos and, yeah. and cable operators having to, um, you know, change the way they work to sort of exactly. keep up with the network. Um, so uh, you know, one of the things you mentioned was um, you know greater data consumption with five G. I definitely uh, we. Here at Light Reading, we definitely see that across the board in the United States, especially that 5G consumers just flat out use way more data than 4G consumers ever did. And that that seems to be um, the more uh, rollouts we have in 5G in the US, the more the more customers sign on. That seems to be true throughout. It's not just early, uh, the, the earliest adopters. Um, so that's one indication of 5G's promise because, you know, when you start using more data, obviously you start consuming other services and yeah. possibly giving uh, different, you know, uh, companies more revenue or more of your, uh, uh, more of your paycheck. <laughs> um, what are some other, uh, you know, initial indications of the 5G promise that, that, that you've observed? So I think I, it's what I mentioned before that what we are seeing more and more operators looking to cooperate with mm -hmm. differentiated type offerings. Um, and, and for example, where, you know, Amdocs is working now in the 5G Open Innovation Lab. And the mm -hmm. Open Innovation Lab, you know, today, you know, uh, we are focused in the use case in agriculture and, and we just went live with the use case of a drone filming the, 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 the crops in real time and providing real time analytics. But, but it's not about that specific use case because whenever, you know, when you talk about a specific use case, somebody always has something to say, no, that's not applicable because A, B, C. Mm. And, and I'm saying it's not about that specific use case. It's about the ecosystem, right? You have mm. their, their, you know, um, Amdocs and T-Mobile and Microsoft and, and NASA and, and VMware and Dell. And I hope I didn't forget anyone else, but those are like the founding <laughs> members. But you also have dozens of these uh, um, uh, startups that mm. come and they want to, the, you know, this they have the, the ability to launch and try these things that they couldn't do in a very static type of network with, you know, just getting, I don't know, X amount of data and maybe just the speed. The fact that, they, again, they can leverage the edge resource and the cloud and a tailored connectivity and sometimes combining 5G and non-5G types of connectivity, again, because everything is, is, is software defined and much more agile and very connected to the business requirements, this is the true potential. And and again, this is just one example. We're we're involved in multiple other POCs and trials. And again, at Amdocs, we have the benefit. Sometimes we're coming from the network and service orchestration layer. Sometimes we're coming from the BSS layer, from from more to monetization angles. Sometimes combining several of them, uh, um, and and that does give us, you know, like you mentioned at the beginning, the the holistic overarching view of all of the needs in this new five G ecosystem. Yeah, I think this is a you know we're we're at an interesting spot, and those uh, those sort of examples, uh, like you said, those use cases, I find them very educational because it's like it does um, help 
us not only see the difference between the different, you know, generations of networks, but also how they're all going to come together and, you know, and, and work together at a point, uh, depending on what the uh, business case is and, you know, and, and yep. what technologies are involved. So it, it, it is a pretty interesting uh, time to be uh, looking at the market. Um, and I think we'll leave it there for now. Uh, Ron Porter uh, from Amdocs, thanks so much for, uh, for giving us a moment of your time and, and catching us up on 5G. Thanks a lot, Phil. It was great to be here and hope to talk again soon.